Hey guys, welcome back. We just got a boatload of Halo Infinite news and everything. If you somehow missed my stream yesterday, it was absolutely insane. Thank you all for stopping by. I really do appreciate it. What we saw, I was generally really positive about. Actually, a lot more positive than I thought I was going to be. I was quite honestly going into this expecting to be quite disappointed. And overall, I really wasn't. But at the same time, <clears throat> it, it wasn't perfect. There were some issues with what we saw that I don't think could be just fixed overnight um and those things i i'm gonna gloss over them in this video i'm not gonna talk about them in this video um this video is dedicated purely to breaking down the details the law um the implications of everything that we saw i'm gonna try and do a dedicated video tomorrow just giving my free unscripted thoughts on the, my opinions with the game and the problems that were presented within the gameplay trailer um, but this video is not for that. This video is for just breaking down everything that we've seen and diving into all the juicy details. And my friends, there are a lot of juicy details. Let's begin. So we're going to start off with the Become Step Inside trailer, which was a very weirdly named trailer. It was the thing that we saw on stream before the actual gameplay that showed Chief's Gen 3 Mjolnir being created with a pretty nice commentary by, I want to say it was Cortana, may have been Horsey, but it sounded like Jen Taylor was enunciating like she does with Cortana and not Horsey. Um, so let's dive into it. So firstly, we see this thing, which is where Chief's armor is made. It's like some space tether armor crafting station or something. Kind of weird. And then that massive crater in the background, which is actually kind of reminiscent to the crater that's made when a guardian takes off from, is it Biko, that planet in Hunt the Truth season two? I think it was Biko. Uh, this guardian right, like rises out of the ground and leaves this massive crater. And that looks like a guardian crater to me. Then we get a little montage of all the individual pieces of his Mjolnir being made, and it looks kind of like forming Beskar armor from the Mandalorian. And I've got to say, right, the music in the background to this, very subtle, but whew, chills. I love it so much. Then after this sort of reverse Terminator 2 ending, Cortana starts to talk, or at least I think it's Cortana talking, about Chief Mjolnir, saying that the Mjolnir exosuit is now complete, and even though this technology will save humanity in the war to come, I must remind myself, liquid crystal cannot rise on its own, titanium alloy cannot prevail in the face of extinction, armor cannot hope, it all means nothing until you step inside. Which is basically her saying that as incredibly powerful and technological as, as the armor is, at the end of the day, without the soldier inside, without Chief, without John, Sierra 117 inside, the armor is nothing. At the end of the day, everything that happens with that armor boils down to the Master Chief. And then while she's saying all this, we get another really cool look at just all the individual pieces of Mjolnir being put together. The forearms, the hand, the grappling hook, the chest plates, and all that just being put together. And the helmet like being screwed on like a like a lid cap. It, it just looks so good, dude. This, this Gen 3 looks absolutely immaculate. As the BIOS boots up, we get all this information about the Mjolnir, which is, I, as far as I can tell, I've compared the two, and as far as I can tell, it's identical to the BIOS from last year's trailer. Um, in, a, in something that got revealed in the day, it said that it was modified by Halsey on the 9th of September 2559, which wasn't the same as last year. It was 2561 last year, but it appears that in this trailer, it's been changed back to 2561, so I don't know if that was a mistake or something, but everything else in here is the same. Um, it's talking about SPDR again. There's a bunch of Game Pass codes that have already been reclaimed. Uh, the last modified by Horsey thing, created by Materials Group. As far as I can tell, everything is still the same in this BIOS as last year. And then we end the trailer nice and strong with just an utterly gorgeous shot of Chief. This Gen 3 dude is absolutely just just wah, chef's kiss chef's kiss and then we go into the main meat and potatoes of today the gameplay reveal now it starts off not actually in gameplay but weirdly in a menu that says press start to begin demo now i don't know about you guys but this literally had me mashing my start button in real life hoping for the best. I just want to play this goddamn game 343, okay? I'm willing to do just about anything. Uh, so in the background of this, uh, not only is the background gorgeous, it's like a, a really 
sort of somber, almost quaint purple sky, we have this haunting chant in the background that actually, if you listen to it for a little bit, it takes a bit of a dark turn. It goes a bit a bit deeper. Um, so I think some male voices come in and it starts sounding a quite dark and, and haunting, which might be an indication of the game's tone. In the background, we have those all too familiar stone circles from the 2018 trailer. And in the middle of the, the middle one, there appears to be some like blue foreigner energy that kind of looks like something slip space related. So my first thought was like, is this, is this, is this circle like some sort of teleporter or like a, like a portal? Um, they kind of remind me of those gates that you can go through in God of War that teleport you around the map. So maybe these rings have something to do with fast travel. Um, I, I don't know. Certainly interesting. I, I'd certainly say that that blue energy is more than just a aesthetic thing. 28th of May 2560, 167 days after we lost. Now, of course, this is referring to the UNSC losing the battle for Zeta Halo against presumably the Banished, who now control the entire ring. Now, I know a lot of you are going to be thinking, what is 167 days before? this date, that's the 13th of December 2559, which, as far as I'm aware, isn't a significant date. However, there is one issue with this date, so if we go back to the BIOS from early on, um, you'll see that Halsey modified Chiefs Mjolnir in September 2561, which puts that over a year and a half ahead of this date. But something that I actually just noticed now is that if you watch the BIOS, that date actually changes to 2559. So before when humanity supposedly lost, which I think is probably the actual date that she modifies uh, Chief's BIOS. So what's happening here? Is there like a an in-game retcon going on live or was this just a mistake on 343's end? Not quite sure, but it's a bit of a weird thing to have in a trailer. <laughs> now, I'm not going to lie, there's not exactly much to break down about that crash scene, but there's just something so cool about seeing the banished AA turrets just absolutely wipe this pelican out. I don't know what it is, but man, the banished have really established a foothold on this ring. And then when they do crash, we get some really nice dialogue between the pilot and chief, and honestly... This has just made me love the pilot even more as a character, and also the sort of dichotomy between Chief and the pilot. They are two very, very different characters. Chief is objectively mission focused, whereas the pilot is like all emotive and honestly, like he says, he's just sick of it all. He just wants, the man just wants to go home for God's sake, and he's getting dragged back into fighting. Chief is just pulling him back in. Just hearing Chief say the banished as well. There won't be a home if we don't stop the banished. That sent chills down my spine, honestly, like, just just hearing Chief acknowledge the Banish, I don't, I don't know what it was, but just something about that that I absolutely loved. Later on, the pilot talks about going to scavenge for a slip space drive among a bunch of condors that have been downed. And this really puts an emphasis, I think, on the exploration and discovery that's going to fit into the free room and the open world aspects of Halo Infinite. I have a feeling that that's not going to be the only instance of going to scavenge for things. And then later on as well, he also says to Chief, let me see what I can find, which could maybe relate to the upgrades thing. So when you open the map screen, we'll get to this more in a minute, but when you open the map screen, there's a little tab for upgrades. So maybe the pilot can scavenge for like old UNSC tech for you to upgrade your suit or your weapons or something. But yeah, we'll cover that more in a minute. And then later on, like right at the end of the trailer, in fact, we see the pilot squatting over the ruins of a condor, and it doesn't look like he was that successful in finding a slip space drive, so we'll have to see how that goes. And then, just like that, it fades nicely into gameplay, and the first thing that strikes me, honestly, besides the AR, which looks like it's missing textures, kind of, um, is the wildlife. So there's a clear emphasis on wildlife in this game. We saw that back in the 2018 trailer, and it's clear that they haven't lost that focus. I mean, there's the birds in the sky, there's those creatures running through the grass. We see more later on in the in the gameplay. Uh, there's a clear focus on that. As Chief takes out the grunts, which by the way, I'm not, not a massive fan of the way that AR sounds in this game, quite honestly, but as he takes them out, uh, you can see that his shields drop, and then they recharge, and the shield recharge sound is just Ooh, immaculate. But the visual effect, the, the hexagons, is a bit much. It, it seems far too intrusive, in my opinion. I'm not a fan of that. 
Now, I've seen some people saying that this crashed ship is the Infinity, and no, it's not. It's far, far, far too small. Does it slightly resemble the front of the Infinity? Yeah, kind of, but it's definitely not. It's just like a random fuselage or something. I wouldn't look too much into it. The Banished Phantom then flies over, and although I am a fan of the design, I've got to say this animation is a little bit wonky. Like, you can see it sort of change direction halfway through, so... Can we, can we patch that out for launch, please? And then Chief breaks into a sprint. Now, if you saw the live stream, then you'll see that I wasn't a fan. Oh, what's, what's RB? <laughs> Fucking sprint. Okay, right. I still hate sprint. In my opinion, sprint does not belong in Halo. Never has done, never will do. But the one thing I will say is that sprint in infinite, by the looks of it, is a lot slower than Halo 5 Sprint and Halo 4 Sprint and even Reachers, um, which is a good change. I still don't want it. It still breaks up the gameplay flow and affects map design and everything in very, very bad ways. But I mean, I guess it's not Halo 5 Sprint, I guess. After a bit of Warthog driving, we get to probably one of, if not the biggest reveal of this entire reveal. The fact that Halo Infinite is officially an open world Halo game. We get to see the map, which covers like a certain area of the open world, and there is so much to break down here. Let's start off with the actual map itself. Now, you can see that the, the areas of the ring are split into almost islands, which my guess right now is that each island is going to be sort of its own contained open world, uh, that you can, and you can travel between them either using the pelican or by grappling maybe even with a grappling hook. Uh, there's a lot of potential there. You can see on the right hand side, there's like a massive wall that honestly kind of gives me sentinel wall vibes, maybe? I'm not sure. What I am sure of though is that given the amount of islands here that are broken apart, the ring has clearly sustained a lot of damage. If you zoom in a little bit to the mission, we can see that there's a mission description saying that we're not leaving this island until we take out the banished AA cannons. There are three of them. They're heavily defended. Proceed with, with caution. Now that to me sounds like each island is almost like a mini mission, like we've already said. Um, and to get from one island to another, you have to do certain objectives to allow the pelican, the pilot's pelican to fly you there or for you to get there by alternate means. Above that, we can see the actual objectives. Um, and then above that, we have four icons, very interesting icons. The one on the left with 0320 next to it, God knows what that is. Um, the one at the right of that, the normal difficulty logo, um, shows the difficulty of the mission, which actually, interestingly, I had a call with some of the devs at 343 um, shortly after the reveal, and I'm, I'm allowed to talk about this. They, they told us that um, each mission in the game isn't a different difficulty. You can literally pick the difficulty that you want in the main menu and then... I think all the missions in the open world will then be that difficulty, so clearly this is being played on normal. Then at the right of that, we have what honestly looks a bit like a like a car battery or something? I don't know. And then at the right of that, we have a petrol tank? I, God knows. My, be my best guess are that these two things are like collectibles, like terminals and it, law intel and stuff to be found in that area. That would make the most sense. If we go forward a bit to when the crosshair actually lands on one of the gun batteries, we can see that the description changes to this AA cannon is controlled by a command console inside a control room underneath the cannon. Use the weapon to hack into the console and destroy them. Now, the weapon, if you remember last year in the trailer, showed up when Chief put that AI chip in his helmet. So maybe it's like some, I don't know, destructive AI or something that can be used to take out banished consoles or... God knows, by the looks of it, it's going to be something offensive. I mean, the name of the weapon implies it's offensive in some manner. What it actually ends up being, whether it's like an AI or if it is SPDR, like we all predicted, then I, I don't know, maybe SPDR could be put into an AA gun to like screw the internal systems and destroy it and take it offline. Who knows? And then at the top of the screen, we have three tabs, TAC map, upgrades, and database. TAC map is the map, upgrades... Fellas, there's your RPG mechanics. What these upgrades are gonna, are gonna be? No idea. Maybe Mjolnir upgrades, maybe weapon upgrades. You'll see later on in this, a lot of the weapons have like Picatinny rails and Weaver rails that you can quite visibly detach scopes from and attach more on. So maybe there's gonna be like actual in-depth weapon customization in the campaign. 
wouldn't surprise me given that the game is open world, or maybe you can attach things to your Mjolnir, or hell, maybe even customize your Mjolnir and add like different pieces to Chief's base Gen 3 and change how it looks to give you a different effect. And then, database, I'm my fingers right now, you can't see them, but they are literally crossed that this database thing is going to be like a law codex that people have wanted, myself included, for years in Halo. Something like that, where you can look at like all the enemies you found, the environments, scan them, read the lore about them, would be honestly perfect. Mass Effect does it, Halo CEA kind of did it, just come on, 343. This game is an open world game, you've got to give us a lore codex, please, 343. When Chief gets into combat again, we can see that on the left here, you might have missed this, a Grunt is holding a Needler, so there you go, for anybody who thought the Needler wasn't in the game, there it is. Uh, and as he gets into more combat, we can see that there are various different types of Grunts. There's classic Grunts, and also 343 era Grunts, in all different colours, blue, white, yellow, I love the, I love the variation with that. The Elite as well looks really, really good, the armour... The lighting on it isn't good, that's one of the major issues of this, the lighting in this game in certain areas looks really bad, and it makes the Elite not look as good as he probably does look. Um, seeing him do a barrel roll was kind of cool as well. Uh, seeing the Elites just actually look like Elites again though is so nice dude, it's so good. Oh yeah, forgot to mention, the pistol, the MK50 sidekick. Now, I really, really, really hope this is not a replacement for the Magnum 343. Um, the reason I say that is that, we'll get onto this more in a minute, but the new shotgun, according to IGN, is a replacement for the classic shotgun. And it doesn't look anything like a Halo shotgun. Neither does this pistol. So, I re if, this, if this is like an extra pistol alongside the Magnum, Awesome. I'm all down for it. It doesn't look particularly Halo. It literally looks like a 5.7, but, you know, I, I'm, if it's alongside the Magnum, I won't complain. If it's replacing the Magnum, we're gonna, we're gonna have a few issues, because this, I'm gonna be honest, this pistol does not look even remotely like it belongs in a Halo game. It just, I could see this pistol in Modern Warfare, in Siege, in COD 4, in Battlefield. It, it just looks so generic, honestly. It's just a pistol. The, the unique flair of the Magnum is just completely lost on it. Um, but I'm hoping that it's, it's not the only pistol. We then get our first glimpse at the VK-78 Commando, which is, as far as I'm aware, the first UNSC rifle to not be bullpup, which is a weird departure for Halo. UNSC rifles are always bullpup, um, so we'll have to see how this thing goes. Um, the design overall, a lot of people are saying that the VK in the name could be a reference to, like, Chris Vector, the developers of, of the Vector. And honestly, the, the sort of silhouette of this weapon does kind of remind me of the Chris Vector. And, you know, if they want to canonize one of my favorite weapons of all time in Halo, then, <laughs> you know, I won't complain. I love that gun, uh, in real life at least. I just, this weapon, I will say, does, again, look a little bit sort of generic. I, I'm not sure. We'll have to wait and see. When Chief zooms down the scope, which isn't actually a scope, it's a holographic sight, we don't get a Halo 5 Smart Link aim down sights effect. We get like an actual Halo zoom in effect, which to me screams that this game doesn't have aim down sights. Thank God. I feel like if it did, it would have been like a Halo 5 BR effect, where you literally just look down the, down the red dot sight as opposed to actually scoping in. I feel like this is like indirect confirmation that Infinite doesn't have ADS, and I really hope that it doesn't. Please, please. And there they are, the Brutes. We are finally fighting the Brutes again. Now, I'm not entirely sold on these animations, honestly. I thought, I thought initially that when Chief sticks that Brute, he berserks, but they're both doing these animations, these like berserking animations, as soon as they get out of the drop pod, so I don't think that's the case. I like how the armor looks, um, and they look pretty satisfying to shoot. The armor sort of like breaks off as you shoot them, and also when you shoot that one that berserks in the leg, it like trips over and stumbles on the leg that you shot, which is really cool. Um, again, I will say that the berserk animation, you compare it to Halo 2's, like Halo 2, the brute literally tosses his rifle to the side, gets an all force and starts bounding towards you, whereas in this, he just kind of jogs, which looks a bit underwhelming, um, but that's, it is what it is. 
Here, we see Chief pick up a drop wall equipment, much like a bubble shield from Halo 3, except you can shoot through it and it only protects you in front of you by the looks of it, which is pretty cool. Uh, and also get the option to pick up a fusion coil. We can now throw fusion coils at the enemy. More of that in a minute. This brute captain as well, right here, looks straight out of Halo 3, just with a red banish tint and... I'm a big fan. Maybe a little bit too cartoonish, maybe, but overall, I I do honestly really like this design. He then slides, which again, not not a fan of. Um, but then grappling hooks and sticks the brute captain with a spike grenade. They're back, baby. Um, the grappling hook I'm actually quite sold on, considering that it's not going to be a innate ability in multiplayer. Um, and the distance doesn't look like insane either. I was worried it was going to be like Pathfinder in Apex Legends, but it's really not. Um, honestly, I'm sold on this grappling hook. Uh, the spike grenade looks really cool as well. Um, and then, once this captain is dead, Chief picks up a Ravager, one of the new banished weapons. And the only new weapon in this entire reveal that I actually like the sound of. Um, I love the design of it as well. It looks really menacing and brutish. You'll see more when it's shot in a second. But I'm a big fan of how this thing looks and sounds. No quick time events, baby. Let's go. Okay, now I know I said that I wasn't going to talk about this, but I, I can't not just briefly mention it. When when Chief goes up this massive elevator, it's meant to give you like this massive awe, like, oh, look how big the vista is. Look how big the environment is. But I can't look past like the shadows popping in and out, the clouds popping in and out, the just awfully or not even textured at all, massive like basal hexagonal columns in the distance. Graphically, this game doesn't look good. I'm going to be brutally honest, it doesn't look good. Um, I really hope they can change it before launch and, and just, just beef it up a little bit. Um, apparently, this, this build was quite old um, and the trailer we're going to look at after this one does look a lot better, but <sighs> this is worrying. I'm going to be honest, these graphical issues are concerning to say the least. Again, the Banished Phantom kind of just like the way it flies in looks really amateurish. It, it like hovers and bounces a little bit. It doesn't, the animation honestly looks kind of broken on it. A um, little bit sloppy, a little bit sloppy. This gameplay section here, I actually really like. I think it looks really good. Uh, when Chief shoots the Jackal and then it activates its shield, I love that animation where it flicks the shield on like quite aggressively. Um, the grunt being thrown by the brute with two plasma grenades activated, shouting, screw you, sounds... Oh, I, I love that. That's so good. The Ravager, that banished weapon, just looks and sounds so satisfying to shoot. I I'm really looking forward to using that. Um, and then we get to the another new weapon, the Pulse Carbine. Now, it looks good. I like the design of it, but it doesn't... I don't think it sounds particularly interesting. And again... This is more than likely replacing the carbine if that IGN thing is to be believed. This is not an ample replacement for the carbine or the plasma rifle, in my opinion. Like, the, the carbine and the plasma rifle are two staple Halo weapons that should be in every Halo title. And I get the impression they've tried to merge the two with this, and... Uh, I'm not a fan. I'm not a fan. Then another new weapon, the Mangler, which is that nail gun thing that we saw in all the Mega Constructs videos that is basically just a banished revolver. Now, it looks pretty satisfying to shoot, I'm not going to lie. Um, apparently, it fires heavier but slower projectiles than the UNSC pistol, but it just sounds kind of meh again, especially when you compare it to the Mauler, which... I feel like it looks like the Mauler. I feel like it's meant to sort of replace the Mauler. You compare the sounds and it's like, come on, the Mauler just sounded better. Um, anyway, we still, we, we then see Chief using some sort of like Artemis tracking system or like Death Stranding Odra deck to scan the environment. Uh, and then the grappling hook again, which I'm not gonna lie, it, I, I'm, I love the grappling hook. I think it, I think it looks really cool. Um, but then use the grappling hook to pick up a fusion coil and just yeet it at a shade turret. Like, the potential with that, the, the utter sandbox potential, potential in campaign or in multiplayer, in customs, with that, the amount of montage moments I can already see happening with that is just incredible. I'm a big, big fan of that, and I really hope that 343 focus on these sandbox elements more with Halo Infinite, far more than, like, inherent abilities and stuff, because that is, that right there 
is the type of thing that makes Halo's gameplay so unique and so fun. It's what has always made it that way. And it's what Halo 5 deviated away from and what Infinite should definitely go back towards. Then the final new weapon of today, and it's not one that I'm particularly happy with to be quite honest. The CQS-48 Bulldog, a 12-gauge UNSC right shotgun that's dumb-fed, according to IGN, drum-fed. And it replaces the classic shotgun. Now, I'm going to be honest, right? If they'd said that this is a new shotgun that is in the game alongside the classic 8-gauge pump shotgun, the M45, I'd be like, okay, sick, I, I love it. New gun that works slightly differently to the original shotgun, but is in there alongside it, so we've still got the classic one. Love it. Love it. Instead, we haven't got that. Instead, you know what we've got? We've got another Halo 5 rocket launcher situation, where they just took out a, a very iconic design that was a staple of Halo from day one, took it out, replaced it with something boring and generic for no reason. I, I, I don't understand. And then the sound of the shotgun as well, it just sounds so boring. Like, I'm not a fan of any of the weapon sounds in, the, in this, apart from the Ravager. They, they really don't sound anywhere near as interesting as any of Bungie's. I, you want to call me a Bungie shill? <laughs> go ahead. It's not true, but go ahead. But Bungie's weapon sounds in Halo 1, 2, 3, ODST, and Reach just sounded across the board miles better than this. It, they just sounded so much better. Uh, I... <sighs> but then we're finally introduced to this game's antagonist, or at least one of this game's antagonists, Esherim. The Brute War Chieftain, and by the sounds of it, one that is an absolute legend amongst his pack. This guy, I am so unbelievably excited to see more of this guy. Firstly, his design. This guy is the epitome of a Brute Chad. He's got pieces of Mjolnir, human tech and ceremonial armor on his shoulder plates. He's got like Japanese style breastplates sticking off his breast with like really intricate engravings on and war paint on the face. The overall design of Esherim, I can't put into words how much I love it. It honestly reminds me of like a, a Japanese Shogun era warrior. So, so goddamn cool. And then there's his character. He's literally rolling in the glory of utterly crushing humanity, which, by the way, is something that the Covenant, the, the banished number one rivals, could never do. And then going as far as to not only rub, it, rub in the fact that it wasn't even difficult to do, but going as far as saying that without challenge, he's grown weary and he literally calls out Chief for his final fight. Of all the people to call out for one final fight, he calls out the person that saved the galaxy on numerous occasions and is, without a shadow of a doubt, the best warrior the galaxy has ever seen. That is how big the balls are on this brute. I, I am in love. I cannot wait to see more of this guy. Set a fire in your heart, Spartan. Bear your fangs. Fight hard. That ending to his speech, man. Set a fire in your heart, Spartan. Fight hard, die well. Oh my god. I'm so, so, so happy with this guy. I cannot wait to see more. I've watched that bit like 15 times now since it came out. And every time I get chills and I'm like, yes, dude, set a fire in your heart. Let's go. Oh my god. Okay, one more thing before we get on to the next trailer. There are two things that Esherim mentioned that are quite interesting. He says that they're going to secure the Auditorium, which I'm assuming is going to be some sort of like new foreigner facility on Zeta Halo that we, we don't know the, like, the use of yet. Um, sounds like it will be to me. Uh, maybe, maybe flood related. I'm, I'm crossing my fingers. And then he says that the Harbinger and the Banished share the same goal to fight together to honor the will of Atriox. Now, the Harbinger, what the hell is the Harbinger? So, I, my initial thought was maybe like a prophet or something, but if anybody is gonna ally with a prophet, it's not gonna be the Banished. Um, other people right now are saying that it could possibly be the Didact. If you look at the actual textbook definition of Harbinger, it says that it is a foreigner of something. 
And if we go all the way back, I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to find this picture, but if you go all the way back to Halo Wars 2, there was actually concept art that showed Atriox as a didact hunter. So, call me crazy, but would I be over the top to assume that the didact could be somehow involved in this? Probably, but I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hope for it anyway, because I want the didact back, and this would be a really cool way to do it. Have the didact working alongside the banished to, they think, honor the will of Atriox, but in reality to destroy humanity. I could see it happening. Honestly, the more that I talk about it now, I can actually kind of see it being a possibility. Oh yeah, there's also one more thing that I forgot to mention in this part of the gameplay reveal. When there's this sweeping shot through the Bay of the Pelican, and we can see the entire UNSC fleet, which by the looks of it was all under the command of the Infinity at Zeta Halo, just get absolutely wiped out, presumably by the Banished. You can see that under each of the ship's names, there's an icon. And those icons all appear to be literally just reaches progression ranks. So I can see like warrant officer, I think one is private, sergeant, one is brigadier. They are very specifically the reach designed for those ranks. Now that makes me wonder, are reachers actual progression ranks going to be coming back? But if they were, this would be a really weird way to show them off. I also noticed as well that some of the ships have only symbols next to them, which is kind of cool. This is, this gives me the idea that like the UNSC really sent like everything they had to try and take control of Zeta Halo. Like, they even sent, like, Oni ships in as well as, like, UNSC ships. And still, they lost. Like, it just makes Esherim even more of a badass and such a good and powerful antagonist. I cannot wait to see more of him. I am more excited for him as an antagonist than I have been for an antagonist for a very long time in Halo, quite honestly. Please, people, if you show us more, I, I want to see more Esherim. But yeah, that's it for the campaign gameplay reveal. Um, overall, very, very happy with it. There are a few things though, like the, the graphics, for example, which I'm really not happy with. But apparently that that build that they showed off in the gameplay reveal was like really old. Um, and the, the next trailer we're going to take a look at, the campaign gameplay trailer, is actually on a much newer build of the game that looks a lot better graphically. Um, so let's take a look at it. The first new thing we see is Chief grappling back down the hill uh, on, on the underside of the AA turret and pulling out an energy sword, which by the way, I'm 99% I'm sure is actually the Halo 2 design, which is my favorite. It's the, the one with the really big curved hilt. I l adore that design. It looks to be that design. Um, it, the view model as well, the way that Chief holds it, I, I, I love that as well. Um, this sword. I'm loving it. I just hope it makes that sound when you turn it on and not the boom that or whatever the hell that sound was that uh, <laughs> that it makes in Halo 4 and Halo 5. I, I really hope they bring back the more gameplay of the Ravager looking like it's absolutely ravaging these elites. <laughs> okay, right. Stop the presses. Let's have a look at Chief's visor. Look at those three dots right there, right? We're on Zeta Halo. Which character has so many ties to Zeta Halo and also happens to have three orange eyes in a pyramid shape? Hmm, I wonder, maybe Mendicant Bias? All right, I don't want to get too head casey. I don't want to start saying things are confirmed when they're not. This could just be like anything. It could just be a set of lights, but I find it very fitting that those three lights happen to be in like a pyramid triangle formation, orange like Mendicant Biases were, and on Zeta Halo, I just, just let me dream, okay? Just, just let me dream. We get a shot at a completely new grenade, like a, a bouncy electric stun grenade that like absolutely just annihilates these elites and appears to have quite a large radius as well. Uh, like probably like a large EMP type thing, which could be kind of interesting. And then, fellas, just look at it. The BR-55 is back! I'm so happy! My favourite BR design is pretty much back. The scope is a bit bigger, but you know what? I'll take it. I'll absolutely take it. Uh, another shot of the grappling hook as well, followed by a brute captain with a ravager that looks like an absolute monster. And the, also, we can see the destruction effects a lot more. He sticks a... Chief sticks this captain with a jetpack with a spike grenade, and the armour just kind of breaks apart. It actually looks pretty satisfying. Um... Far more satisfying than any of the other enemies that 343 have, have developed so far, so this is definitely looking good. 
And then we finally round it out with this comfy, just lovely shot of Chief in a warthog with the sun setting on Zeta Halo, ready to explore. This trailer, I think, especially if you look at this picture here, did the graphical fidelity a lot better. Um, I don't know why the actual gameplay reveal wasn't on this build. I'm not quite sure there. Don't get me wrong, this is far from perfect and there are definitely some improvements that need to be made. Um, some of the PR pictures that 343 released that were meant to like wow people with how good the game looked really didn't. Um, and they also birthed the meme of Craig, everyone's favorite neighborhood brute who's kind of just apathetic and has kind of just given up on life. Um, everybody say hello to Craig and also uh, Gregory. You, you can't be forgetting Gregory either. Gregory is equally as important as Craig. But real talk, I'm going to have a video out. I, I said earlier, earlier in the video tomorrow, it might be tomorrow, it might be Sunday. I'm not sure. I'm going to get a video out about my, my just raw opinions, my, my blunt, honest opinions about everything we've seen. Um, because I'm happy and I'm not happy. My opinions are mixed. I was really, really happy at first. But over time, as I've watched the trailers more and combed through them for like videos like this, my opinions have kind of changed a little bit. So I'm just going to lay them all out in a video in the next few days so you guys can see them. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, guys. Thank you so much for the support recently. I'm at the very least so goddamn excited for just more infinite stuff. The end of Infinite's dry period is, is finally over. The, the release is in a sight. And I cannot wait. I cannot wait to make more videos about this game as time passes. I cannot wait. So thank you all for, for stopping by, for watching, for coming in the stream, for everything. I love you guys so much. And I'll catch you all in the next one.